Yeah. Let's go. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I got some good news today. I'm finally going to be working on the car. As you can see, it hasn't even been touched since the last video. Uh, things have been a little bit hectic, but some other good news, which you may have learned about just before this video, is the channel is now monetized. So I have already made about $3.50 off of it. So if you guys know of any tracks available for $3.50 that I could buy, um, you know, we need a squirrel tune factory. So let me know what you can find, but um, I couldn't really find anything. But anyways, uh, we're going to get started on the car today. We're going to get the engine and transmission out of the car and get all the front end off, all the turbo kit and all that, and uh, see how easy that is to pull apart. And then we will go ahead and pull the heads off probably and uh, just see where we can get from there. I've got some brand new heads sitting over here to show you guys that are going to be going on. So I'm excited for those. And uh, then we also have the dump valve to put in the transmission. And then once all that stuff's in, we should be good to put it all back in and start the wiring process and fuel system and all that fun stuff. All right guys, just wanted to show off some of this uh, fab work now that we've got it pulled apart a little bit. We just got the front bumper off and the radiator and the bumper mounts. And you can see right there, it is, uh, it's got these uh, bolts actually welded in there. And this is the mount for the radiator and the, um, the bumper. And that just goes right up there. And you can see where the other little mounts are down there. And then you can also see there where the turbo mount comes right off so we can get that out of the way. So I will show you guys these little uh, mounts that come off. Those come right off and uh, get out of the way. That way you can uh, pull the motor easily. So there's that nice uh, small little GTR forced inductions turbo. Now I'll get back to work and uh, get this thing pulled apart. Alright guys, another little progress update. Got the turbo off and you can see here the uh, mount for it. It's got uh, three different bolt holes. You can see where the uh, where that connects right there. And it's a V-band fitting as you can see since it's the tile housing. You can see there the, there's a bolt also on the bottom that's uh, not put in there right there. But. And you can also see the um, connection for the uh, clamps, they, let me go find it, see what the name is called again, because I forget every single time. Alpha lock, LPS alpha locks, and you see it has it on this side too. It's got an O-ring on each side, and uh, they're like a quick disconnect, and they uh, work pretty good, and make it uh, come off a lot easier, so. 
All right, now we will get this uh, turbo mount taken off and then get the crossover and all that taken off. And uh, we'll be just about ready to pull the motor out. All right guys, I got the crossover off, and uh, as you just seen, definitely just dropped it straight on the ground. You know, that's the best way to take it off, but luckily the only thing that got hurt was uh, one of these little fittings that I had on there. So that took the fall. So my nice tile waist gates are still all right, even though they just got dropped on the ground, but whatever, um, slipped out of my hand. So anyways, I think we're just about ready to pull it. I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave the fuel pump and the alternator on there whenever I pull it. And I'm just going to pull the intake off and put the, or also pull that valley cover off and put the lift plate on it and then we'll go ahead and get it pulled out. All right guys, so as you've seen, we got everything pulled out. Um, well, other than the transmission, I decided to go ahead and pull that separate because I kind of forgot about the steering shaft over there getting in the way of the mid plate. So it was easier just to pull the motor off the mid plate and leave the transmission there and uh, pull the motor out. But anyways, here it is. If you guys uh, don't remember it, but get my finger out of the way. But uh, here it is, if you guys don't remember it. Um, still the same little 4.8, same 706 heads, however that is going to change soon as you guys will see. So I'm going to go ahead and pull some of this stuff off and then probably get the heads pulled off and uh, possibly uh, put the other ones on, we'll see. Alright guys, I'm just going to show quickly uh, how you pull a head off just because um, I know for some of you that sounds uh, simple and you already know how to do that. but. I remember whenever I was watching uh, Sloppy Mechanics videos a long time ago and didn't understand exactly how it worked because I hadn't worked on one myself yet and uh, watching him do it helped so I'm going to show you guys how you do that. So you want to make sure you use an impact because these LS motors don't work well with wrenches. Um, you know you got to impact everything but sarcasm obviously but that's how I'm going to do it. And another tip that I've actually got from Sloppy is using the valve covers to store all of your parts that you pull out. So it helps you keep track of things and makes it easier.
All right, so we got all of the rockers out. Now, sometimes this rocker stand will be stuck in there, but mine's been out before and it was just out recently, so it comes right out. But go ahead and pull these push rods, which um, you'll see. I don't know if you can see that on there. Probably not. There's no way it's going to focus on that. Come on. No, nope, but they are 7.575 uh, 080 wall, 3 8 inch push rods from BTR. Um, as you uh, probably know, you won't be using that long of a push rod with a normal like LS7 lifter or stock style lifter. But since I have the Johnson lifters, uh, that's what I have to run. So, And these have been, this exact setup has been to 8600 RPM, as you guys know and I haven't had any issues with it. These are the, this is a BTR Ultimate RPM spring kit installed at uh, 1700 height. Um, so it's set up for 650 lift and um, it's been good to go. I had some issues with the 660 springs when I started spinning it over 7800, but that was also um, with some old used ones that had come out of another motor. So that may have been why, but Either way, these have been great, and I plan to take them quite a bit higher this year. So I'm gonna go get the tools to go ahead and pull this head off, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I moved the camera slightly to give you a little bit better view at this. I'm actually not going to impact the big bolts out just because I'm curious how they feel. But uh, first, I got to remove these steam vents because they're in the way. So I'm gonna pull these off real quick. pull this back one which is actually it's just blocked off because I have found that you don't really need to use the four corner ones even though they are uh, probably beneficial um, mine didn't come with it and I didn't care enough to swap them out so I just went ahead and leave these blocks in there and uh, worked fine for me so And I'm going to pull these top bolts out first, which are the much smaller ones, which don't actually really do much anything for uh, sealing the chamber, at least. It's just for, uh, you know, the top part of the head. But uh, maybe I should get the right size. That'd probably be helpful. These are ARP Pro Series head studs. They're just like the basic ones. And these top bolts are 3 8 or studs, I mean. They're a 12 point. I'm just gonna go ahead and sit these in this other valve car until I can get a bag or something to put them in. I'm gonna go ahead and move this actually since I have everything in my own way. That is exactly why I like putting everything in the valve cover like that though, or valve, you know, valve cover, because um, you can just move it all and keep it all together. That one as well, it actually uh, came out with a nut. Started to at least. There we go. Yeah, went ahead and pulled all the way out. Whoops. All right, now we'll get on to these uh, bigger ones. I believe these torque to about 85 foot pounds, if I'm not mistaken. That is these ARPs. 
you know, will be different if you are using stock ones or reusing stock ones. Whoops, we're spinning our stand around. I also thought about whenever I did these, um, actually retorquing them after running them for a little while, but keyword thought about, I never did that. But I have heard some people do. There's also a pattern on doing these, but I don't think it's super important. But it's basically just, uh, I believe it's from the middle out, but, or yeah, middle out. I think that's all of them. All felt good to me. I was just kind of doing it just because I was curious if any of them were going to be a little bit loose or anything like that. But. Look good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the impact and just pull these rest of the way out. And then I'll uh, yank this head off. See what it looks like. Kind of curious if I was lying actually, because uh, according to the internet, you can't go this fast without ported heads. So we'll see if, uh, if that's true or not. And I'm also just now remembering the recommendations people made to get a catch pan for the uh, engine stand. That way I don't make a mess. But uh, I did not remember that before, so I'm probably about to make a mess. That's all right, we'll clean it up. No point making things easy on ourselves. Go ahead and drop that too. See if we can find it. Not right now, we'll find it later. There we go, look at that. We didn't even drop that one. You also see that I left a spark plug in this last hole. Um, I'll show you the reason why totally when I get this off. I'm actually kind of curious what it's going to look like because that spark plug, whenever I pulled it out, had uh, a lot of rust and stuff on it or something like that. It was kind of nasty looking, so I went ahead and tossed it back in just as a reminder of uh, this is the cylinder that might be all nasty. So we'll see what it looks like. Uh, we got it all pulled off of there. So now we're going to uh, see if we can rip this thing off. Typically, whenever you do this, you'll drop coolant everywhere. But uh, this thing has been sitting without coolant for a while. So maybe I got lucky, which it does look like I did. Oh, yeah, this cylinder looks kind of nasty. But I'll show you here in a second. Look at the bottom of that. See there, that valve looks like it's all rusted. I guess that was uh, what was causing that. And that plug is also not tightened all the way in there, just for uh, 
reference if you're wondering why it's so far away. But they don't look too bad to me. They look like they probably cleaned themselves up a little bit with that E85. We'll go ahead and look at the ports as I dump all the uh, all the washers out. They appear to still be stock ports. Huh. Strange, the internet was wrong. That's a first. All right, we'll go set this down real quick and then I'll show you guys the inside. All right, here we are. This is the first time that it has been opened back up. Had the heads off of it since I started this whole thing. See some little bit of junk in there. It's probably had some stuff run in through the uh, through the intake while it's been apart. I haven't really been taking very much care of trying to keep all that clean. Some, I wonder what that is right there. Nothing. It's, didn't look too bad to me. None of them seem to be moving around funny or nothing. Just a little bit of rust in this one, but uh, oh well. It's uh, don't think that's too big of a deal. And also, you will see on this head gasket, it is copper sprayed, so that's why it is uh, copper colored. Um, some people are against that. Some people are for it. I was told to do it by some people that make quite a bit of power with a lot of different platforms so I always have and it's always worked all right for me um, maybe it doesn't help maybe I don't know maybe it does but uh, I imagine it should help with stuff like this especially where the um, surface of the head and the block is uh, probably not the best because you know I don't care enough to get it all decked and cleaned up like you probably should so I imagine it probably helps but that's uh, up to you to decide and uh, you can decide if you want to do that or not but I will continue doing it see if we can get this thing off here and this is a Cometic gasket however it is going to have a LS9 gasket going on it not really because I think the LS9 gasket's better that's just what we decided to go with this time but this one worked fine obviously but it doesn't appear to have leaked anywhere or anything like that Thing is really not one to come off of there. There we go. That looks good to me. No uh, cracks or nothing here. Um, I don't. I've never seen one here on a 4.8 or 5.3 with a smaller bore. However, I have seen them crack in this area or just around this water jacket on the 6.0s and like LSX motors, um, the early LSX blocks that had this style of uh, coolant jacket. The Gen 2 LSX block ended up having some more bracing here to avoid that, but haven't had any issues uh, with these smaller motors. But there's the lifters, I'll go ahead and pull one out just to uh, show you guys. These uh, Johnson lifters. Link bar, as you can see, if I can get this thing to focus. There you go. These, in my opinion, are uh, part of the secret to getting it to live and make power at, you know, up over, well over 8,000 RPM. However, the LS7 lifters are pretty capable as well, and I know people have pushed those pretty hard, but this is what I prefer, is what I use. But. Anyways, that's uh, pretty much it. Shows you, uh, just to give you a little bit of I've, an idea on how you pull a head off of one of these things and uh, what they look like inside if you didn't already know that. All right guys, so before I close the video out, um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the new heads. Um, as you can see here, they are Wilkes Performance. Um, they actually sponsored me these heads. They are 862s. Um, the only reason that we went with the 862 over the 706 is because some of the 706 castings are weaker and are known for cracking so just to avoid that I went ahead and went with the 862 but the 862 and the 706 casting are essentially exactly the same um, however as you can see these are 
nice and ported and um, you also will see shortly that they have some uh, bigger valves in them as well. Um, we'll check out the exhaust port but they are CNC ported and uh, they're super nice looking and all cleaned up which is uh, a little bit different than uh, what I'm used to and you'll also see that I went ahead and took a couple of the valve springs off um, I'm going to be swapping my valve springs over because these are the BTR Ultimate RPM Spring Kit as I said and I'm not sure what the springs are that um, came with them but they were just some generic ones um, so I was just going to go ahead and swap mine over and uh, use these since these are um, more suited for what we're trying to do. Alright guys so here's a comparison of the valves in the chamber. So as you can see these are stock and you'll also see over here that rust that I was talking about. It's in the cylinder. I'm assuming what probably happened. Um, it's kind of on the intake valve as well. Um, this is what the plug looked like. Um, it's pretty nasty. Um, I'm assuming what happened, which I have heard of happening sometimes on E85 cars, is right as you shut it off, right before it actually shuts off, it'll, you know, pulse the injector and put some fuel in the cylinder that won't get fired since you shut the car off and that fuel just kind of sits in the cylinder and uh, attracts water and all that. So I'm assuming that's probably what happened there, but uh, not really a concern now. Um, but you'll see on these, these are... I believe it's a 201 um, or I think that's what we ended up going with 201 or possibly 203 I can't remember exactly now uh, intake valve whereas these are the standard I believe it's 189 intake valve and then I'm not sure exactly on the exhaust valve if that is I would assume it's slightly oversized as well or maybe just stock size I'm not even not sure but it looks pretty good to me and uh, I'm excited to test these out and hopefully we'll pick up some power. Uh, originally they offered me these actually last year while the car was still running before I did the 780 and uh, 495 pass um, but I was pretty much just too lazy to go ahead and swap the heads out and I knew that I could do what I wanted to do which was a four second pass with the stock heads so I decided to go ahead and uh, just wait until a new build so Unfortunately, we won't get to get a back-to-back -back test to see how much these pick up, but I think they will be uh, a big part in helping get the uh, power range up higher and help me get to that uh, magical 9,000 RPM number. So can't wait to uh, put these on and put them to the test. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and maybe learned something from me pulling the heads off of this little 4.8. And uh, if not, maybe you just enjoy watching me pull stuff apart and talk crap. But uh, let me know if you guys enjoyed that or if you learned something or what else you want to see. I figured I'll probably just show the rest of the cam install because it's a pretty common thing on these LS motors. So maybe help some of you guys out if you plan on doing it on your own. Um, cam install is definitely uh, one of the bigger power adders that's pretty cheap on these motors, as uh, most of you know. But make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. And thanks again for reaching that 4,000 watch hours point so I can uh, monetize this stuff and make a little bit of money off of it. It's uh, nothing crazy for sure, but it definitely helps. But it helps. And also buying t-shirts and stickers helps. So if you want to support the channel, click the top link in the description and uh, pick yourself up some. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video.